Hey you guys, I am, oh, I've got a few things to talk about today and it's actually, I've been feeling an urgency to make a video about some things that I feel like the Holy Spirit has been revealing to me and um, I've been feeling very called to move away from the technology, move away from YouTube, move away from anything that's distracting, which I have actually done quite a bit in the last year, but even more so in just the last couple of weeks just really pulling away and immersing myself in the word, um, even fasting, um, praying, and really coming to a new level with prayer. And I couldn't understand why I felt also an urgency to make a video. I, I had really nothing to report. I hadn't, I've been having some dreams, but nothing of a really wow nature that felt like it was news I needed to share. It was kind of like just some glimpses of things, things I really hadn't quite figured out yet. So I couldn't understand why I needed to make a video. And then as I started writing down some notes about things I feel like the Spirit was showing me, then I would pick up a book and it was talking about the exact same thing. And I think what it is, is there, is, there has been a time for us to come to YouTube to kind of confirm things as we were seeking. You know how the scripture in Matthew 7, 7 says, ask, seek, um, and knock. Okay, ask and you sh it shall be answered, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be opened. Well, we've been doing that, okay? We've been, we, it's kind of like the, and one thing the Spirit kind of revealed to me, there is, I, boy, man, I'm just finding there is so much in Scripture that is significant that you don't really think is significant at first. The order of that Scripture is very significant. Ask is where we start out. We start just asking the Lord. I was asking for things even before I was really what I would call a Christian. I was going to church. I would have prayers. I would have needs. Lord, help me get this job. Lord, help me, you know, pay this bill. Lord, make this car not die on me. You know, it's in a moment of emergency you, you ask, okay? But that doesn't really show a depth of of connection with the Lord. Then the next level is seek. Okay, now I'm starting to really start seeking answers. I'm wanting to know Christ a bit more. I'm going beyond, I'm still praying, but now I'm taking it up a notch. I'm praying now for, for knowing him and for also knowing the meaning of things, the, the answer, you know, the answer to um, the Bible, some questions that come up, Lord, help me understand this. I'm seeking answers. I'm seeking answers to questions. I have questions now. I'm not, it's not all about me. Now it's about you. I have questions about you. Okay. Then the, the deepest level is knock. And do we know, we think about knock. What do we knock on? A door. Where else have we seen a door in scripture? Okay. One, we see it many times. But what is one of the main doors, especially relevant now, is in the book of Revelation, and I think I have it pulled up here, um, when Jesus is, it's in Revelation 3, 7 through 13 is the whole book of it, but there's the verse where it says, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. And actually before that, what he opens, no one can shut. What he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. He basically is giving them the key of David. Okay. That to me, what I feel the Spirit has revealed to me is the door of mystery, the door of revelation. It's no accident that that door is in the book of Revelation because that is the Holy Spirit now coming and, and calling. And you can pray without having the Holy Spirit. You can pray. Anybody can just yell out to God. That doesn't necessarily mean they're filled with the Holy Spirit. But seeking is when you start to connect. Seeking is when you're asking for that spirit to, f to come within you and abide in you. And then knocking is saying, okay, spirit, show me what you can show me. That is the knock. And one of the reasons I feel like there is special wisdom in the order of this, see, ask, seek, knock. But also one thing that helps you remember the order is that the order also spells out ask again. Because sometimes you ask on one level and then at the very end you ask on a whole nother level. Um, anyway, so these are the things that I feel like the Spirit has been revealing to me is I'm saying this video, or giving this video to you guys, not because I have a dream to report, but because I want you guys to also, the, those of you who have not been feeling that you're at that level or feeling you have that connection or feeling that you're getting revelation, this is to help you with that. And... I keep being directed to source after source after source that just keeps confirming this to me. Um, and let me just 
read to you. Okay, let me just read here. I came across this book, and I don't think it's been any accident. Um, I, I was sharing this with my intercessory group um, about David Wilkerson, and I only just learned of this man about six months ago when I first opened up my intercessory group. So somebody shared a video of his, and I didn't, I didn't even know who it was. I just started listening to it. I'm like, oh, who is this man? I mean, he, I was just getting chills after chills just listening to him preach, and I finally tracked, found the video on YouTube and tracked it down, and it was David Wilkerson, and he just was just, man, is that man anointed. He has passed on, I think, back in 2011. Um, but after I just, after hearing him preach, you get hungry, you get hungry for Christ. And it's no, <laughs> I don't even mean to, it's funny because the book I was actually, he wrote is called hungry for more of Jesus. And, um, but it does, it, you just get so hungry when you get really hit over the head with the Holy spirit and you just want more of Christ. And there is just, if ever, if you just, if you never read another book in your life, at least make sure you've read this one. Okay. Um, I'm really picky with books. I do a lot of reading and, this one, man, he does not compromise, okay? And there are some times where I've been coming across people in my life, family members, who are living in sin. And I want to have a connection with that person, but I'm at, I'm conflicted because to be with them would be compromise on my part. And whenever I prayed on this, Lord, what should I do? He leads me to scripture that is very brutally honest, saying, let the dead bury their dead. In one case, he brought me right to that scripture. In another case, he said, you know, sons will divide against fathers and daughters divide against like a house divided, um, saying that in the end times, people are going to be having to separate, making those kinds of choices. And he's brutally telling me, you know what? You follow me. This is part of picking up your cross and following me. Sometimes you have to let go. You pray for them, but you it's so easy for the enemy to pull you down to that level than it is for you to rise up and pull away. So just divide, move away, cut off, sever. Um, and when I needed more strength to do that, I read this this book, man, it, it will light a fire under you, okay? And we need that right now, okay? We need that fire. We need to not compromise. And just some of the things... Um, I don't want this to become tedious, me just reading a book, but man, this book is good. And if you don't get a chance to buy this book, um, let me just read some few key things to you. Excuse the glasses, they get crazy reflection on here. So I'm just going to read this real quick. Um, he's talking about um, those disciples of Christ, but people who are truly, truly hungering for Christ. He said, they prayed not for things, not for blessings, not to be be used of God, not forgetting anything of self, but rather only for a fuller revelation of the glory and vastness of their Lord. Um, Christians need exactly this, a greater revelation of Christ. Satan is exerting great power in these last days and hell is unleashing all its fury. The enemy's strongholds are much more fortified, powerful, deeply entrenched than any in the past generation. Without question, Satan, his power, his kingdom, and his work is on the increase. Yes, we know. He is becoming better known, less feared, and more accepted. In this final battle against him, a basic Bible school knowledge of Christ will not be enough. In fact, knowing a lot about Christ will not be enough. Not just the Bible, not just about Christ. We need to quit studying Christ and instead go to his table and let the Holy Spirit reveal him to us. This requires time. And he goes on to talk about how Paul did exactly this. Um, he said, I've read a number of volumes about Jesus Christ, but found in many of them the authors didn't really know him. Their descriptions were clinical, precise, and doctrinally pure, but ultimately lifeless. These authors had not been eating and drinking in his presence. Yet that is how we come to know him, by sitting with him, hearing his voice, and waiting on him to impart divine wisdom. Busy, preoccupied people never get to know Christ. They live for years on some past vision of glory with no fresh word or new revelation. You cannot go into battle in this world where demons rule virtually uncontested unless you are committed to having an ever-increasing revelation of Christ's power and glory. Otherwise, you have no impact against the kingdom of darkness. The principalities, the powers of evil will scoff at you. Only those who know Christ in fullness and an ever-increasing vision will send fear throughout hell. We must be on our knees often. We must come into battle directly from the throne room of God. Otherwise, we will crumble before the enemy. And you know what else I've been wanting? I've been wanting to say this for a while. Um, you know, there's always the debate of people who don't believe in a preacher, rapture. They say, oh, you know, you got to go through the tribulation. And they, what do they do? They grab their Bible and they point to the verses and they say this and that. And we, I mean, any of us 
who really know and have had the rapture revealed to us know there is, you have to rightly divide. There's Matthew 24 and there's the people, there's what is referred to to Israel and there's those that the scripture that refers to the church. Anyway, one thing I've becoming, I kept noticing and noticing and noticing is that people who do not believe in a pre-trib rapture, whether it's mid or post-trib, they're very logically minded. They argue the scripture and they throw those words in your face. But the people who are pre-trib are spirit-led. They're spirit-minded. They have had revelation through the Holy Spirit as I had. I never believed. I never even, the rapture was not preached in my church. I never even, what that was never on my radar, okay? Until I started seeking Christ and abiding in him and hungering for him and knocking and knocking and knocking on that door, fasting. And then I, it was revealed to me as part. And I think that is how God intends it. He said, my book is here for knowledge. It is here to give you wisdom. But that's not where it ends. You to really know me, you have to have the spirit reveal the rest to you. That's how I know that you are truly, truly hungering for me. That you're truly abiding me, that you truly love me because you have to just absolutely have to have that connection. You want me revealed to you and no amount of book learning is going to do that for you. That is a personal relationship with Christ. Just like ask, seek and knock. Ask, you can ask with others and they can pray for you. You can pray and they can pray. You can seek, you can seek, and then you can have others seek with you. But knocking has to be you only. Only you can knock on that door, okay? And that shows that personal connection. And I see it over and over and over again. The people who are who are getting revealed, the, the mysteries that are being solved to them, you know, it's like I said before in a previous video, the rapture isn't a secret, it's a mystery. A secret isn't meant to be kept a mystery is meant to be revealed we're in the end times now is the time for that mystery to be revealed we don't have much more time this is the time for it to be revealed and that's exactly what the holy spirit is doing i'm getting chills right now i can feel the spirit all over me okay but that is what he's doing with these dreams he's that's why god is pouring out his spirit he knows that the enemy is upping the ante and so is he and boy is he just covering all of us right now with his revelation okay but there's more okay and i'm not going to read too much more but this is just stuff that you guys can start using right now because there isn't a moment to waste all right okay so he talks about um he said, someone with an increasing revelation of Christ's vastness need and fear no problem, no devil, no power on this earth. He knows that Christ is bigger than it all. If we had this kind of revelation of how vast he is, how boundless, measureless, limited, and limitless and immense, we would never again be overwhelmed by life's problems. And then I'm going to skip over here. Paul is an example to us. He was committed to having such an ever-increasing revelation of Christ. In fact, all he had of Christ came by revelation. It was taught to him at the Lord's table and made truth to him by the Holy Spirit. Remember, it was three years after his conversion before Paul went to spend time with the apostles in Jerusalem, and he stayed with them only 15 days before continuing his missionary journeys. He later said, by revelation, he made known to me the mystery. The Holy Spirit knows the deep hidden secrets of God, and Paul prayed con constantly for the gift of grace to understand and preach the unsearchable riches of Christ, which is from Ephesians 3, 8. We have boldness and access to these glorious riches, he said, with confidence through faith in him. Um, the Lord is looking for believers who are not satisfied with sifting through all the conflicting voices to find a true word. He wants us to hunger for a revelation of him that is all our own, a deep personal intimacy. Um, and I think that was everything I wanted to point out. Um, and then just one last thing. This is kind of a call to action for the bride. All over the world, God's people are ready to move on in the Lord. They are hungry for more of Jesus and tired of all the lightness and foolishness being preached in the pulpit. And right now, the Lord is calling his bride to come out from among the foolish and lighthearted. A holy, weeping, praying remnant is arising out of Laodicea. Okay. Phew. Okay. So anyway, please, this will be, and I'm not even done with the book. I was so on fire just after reading. I'm not even halfway through it yet, but man, boy, is it lighting me up right now. Okay. So other things I wanted to talk about, and it's so interesting because I know this is not a coincidence. Um, I'm just feeling more and more called to dive into scripture, really seek. And as I, as I really meditate over some verse verses, I, I seek and I ask and I pray on this. And then I go to my prayer closet and I spend time with him, just shutting up, 
cutting out the noise and just listening. And sometimes it's just to talk. Sometimes it's just to spend time. That again is part of that hungering. That is part of that seeking and knocking on the door. And interestingly, as I feel pulled away from the videos, from the because the videos that that served a purpose, and that's what I started to touch on, touch on earlier. When we were coming out on YouTube, we were seeking, seeking, seeking. Okay, now you guys, it's time to step away and knock and knock on that door and have for those of you who have not had mysteries revealed to you now is the time to do it okay it is not impossible he doesn't he doesn't show favor on just a few of us he wants all of us okay he wants all of us and it's just a matter of cutting out the distraction letting things just slide off of you as far as distractions or bondages just cutting it all away and seeking his face okay now, interestingly, one of my admins, Chris Parsons, has also been feeling led to do the very exact, exact same thing. We did not confer on this. He, on his own, was feeling called by the Lord to start making videos of the Psalms. And he's getting he's been pulling people from our group to do voiceovers for, the, for reading the Psalms. And he makes a beautiful video that go, goes along with it. Um, and so as we're all kind of getting more into our devotions and our reading and everything, he's doing the same. And finally, it occurred to me, my gosh, this is the perfect time to to also tell people to go check out Chris Parsons. He's got a, a channel on YouTube. I will put a link to his channel on, on in my notes. Um, but he's one of our admins in our group um, and super spiritually led also. And um, he just gets so much revelation from the Lord. So I encourage you, you can listen to those Psalms in the car. And my gosh, that was another revelation the Lord gave me <laughs> about the verse faith comes through hearing. Okay. And that was something else. I, I'll ever so often I'll just hear a verse and something will will like catch in my spirit going there's something I need to discover here and I'll start praying on it and I really started saying what is this with hearing what is this with hearing and I think it started after I heard the trumpet like something in my spiritual ear just kind of woke up how did that happen and what I and just so you know where did I write it down um yeah faith comes by hearing hearing by the Word of God that's Romans 10 17 so just so you know that's scriptural Okay, so I was wondering about that. I'm like, you know, faith comes by hearing. Does that mean I have to not just read the scripture, but hear it? Do I, is that opening up more of a spirit? Because maybe reading opens our spiritual eyes. Hearing might open up our spiritual ears. And I had always, I had for a long time listened to my Bible when I'm working out on that elliptical that's gathering dust back there. <laughs> I would have my Bible playing while I'm working out. And, and there's a wonderful app. Um, I meant to... Oh, shoot, I don't have my phone with me. I was going to show it to you guys. It's Bible.is. You can find it at the App Store for free. It has many translations on there, and it also will read it to you in a very dramatic way. It has different people for different voices. It will have background sound effects. I mean, it's really cool. Um, I would listen to that. And I realized that I think that also helps absorb. We think of our God created our senses. So doesn't it make sense that we fill our senses with him? We fill our eyes for reading the word. We fill our ears with hearing the word. That again opens up more revelation for us. Interestingly, as I, I had not listened to my Bible in a while, but I decided to do it again. So as a kind of experiment, I started listening to it just throughout the day, whether I'm working out, getting ready in the bathroom, I have, you know, putting makeup on, listen to the word, have it in the car, listen to the word. And one morning I'm coming out of a dream and I hear, this is the first time I've ever heard an audible voice. It was Jesus. I knew without a shadow of a doubt, this is my shepherd. I hear his voice. And he said, he gave me two sentences and I listened to those sentences. I understood, I, well, I didn't understand. I don't really know if I understand the full, under, you know, significance of what he told me. As I fully woke up later, I only could remember the first sentence. The second one, it was, I racked my brain, could not remember it. But the first sentence was, I have signed my name beside every seal. You guys help me with that. I don't know what that means. Uh, I was the biggest thing for me was just recognizing his voice because I later thought how do I how did I know that was Jesus I'd never heard his voice except maybe in thoughts being dropped into my head knowing it was him um but I'd never heard a clear man's voice like like he was standing right next to me talking and I realized from the scripture Jesus said my sheep know my voice they follow me and I know them it makes sense 
we would know his voice. Even if we had never heard it before, the moment that first time we hear it, we know it. We know the voice of our shepherd. Okay. But that didn't happen for me until I was listening to the word. And I'm sure maybe that's not all it was, but just the seeking. But I heard it. I heard that trumpet. I heard his voice, you guys. And I'm nobody special. Trust me. I just hunger after him. And all day long, if I'm not reading the Bible, I'm reading. I sit there with right now with this David Wilkerson book, and I have my Bible on one leg and my this book on the other, and I'm just going back and forth because he has so much scriptural references in here, and I go and look at it myself, so I feel like I'm getting fed on both ways, <laughs> okay? Um, so do that. Listen to the Word. Um, if you don't have an app or a smartphone, just read it out loud to yourself or have somebody else read it out loud to you. My husband and I used to do that at night. We just read the Bible to each other. He doesn't. He falls asleep when he reads, so I read it. <laughs> so I do the reading, and I just make sure he stays awake. So you know, do, do what, just do what you can, okay? Um, and another thing I started doing, and I was. It's one of those things where you don't think about it, but then you do it and then you wonder what took you so long. I, I take communion every day. I was listening to Derek Prince one day and he, I've mentioned him before, he's passed on, but amazing man, especially when it comes to spiritual warfare. And um, he said how he and his wife take communion every day. He, I was just listening to one of his videos or one of his tapes. And I thought, huh, you mean I don't have to wait till Sunday? <laughs> I just didn't know. So I take communion, my husband, I take communion every day. And again, Jesus says, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood. And that's when, remember in the, in the gospels, when it scared away a lot of followers, they are like, what? Well, we know what he means. We hunger after him every day. We partake of Jesus. We partake of the word. Um, we eat the bread, we drink the wine. We, we, that is him symbolically. And it, and you have to really, you know, um, understand you're not just eating a cracker and drinking wine. You are eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood that is taking him within you. And let me share another quick dream again, how literally it is that we are part of Christ. This was a quick little dream. The dream was, um, it seemed like it took place after the rapture. I felt like I was already with the souls and with like, I felt like I was in a, like not a classroom, but like we were with, I was with other souls and we were, uh, I felt like we were glowing and in a, in a room where we were learning something. And I knew Jesus was about to come and, tell, and teach us. At this point, I felt like I already knew him. Like I had already had my reunion with him and we knew him and he was like going to make a visit to our classroom. So we were looking over a table. I don't know what we were doing, but we were studying something and I couldn't wait to see Jesus because I had so I had so many questions. And I said, I have to get to him first before the other souls do because we usually just flock to him. And I'm like, I got to be first with my question because that's me. I'm impatient. So the thing was, when Jesus finally showed up to our classroom, he was all business and it was like no time for questions we got to go and i had a feeling like it had something to do with the earth like something maybe this was in the midst of the tribulation i i'm guessing here all i saw was just what was acted out in this dream this is what he does he's summoning us he takes his chest and he opens it up like superman would his shirt but this was jesus's chest he goes like and he had a robe on but it just like broke apart and this white light goes whoosh out and those of us, like the small group of us that were with in front of him, we, turn, we turned into these bright lights and we go, whew, and we go right into his chest. He goes like this, we get, we go right, fly into his chest, and then I woke up. And I thought, wow, <laughs> when he says he's going to take us unto himself, he is literal. We are a part of him and he is literally a part of us. We are the body of Christ, guys. We are really literally the body of Christ. And it's beyond, I'm sure, the scope of our understanding. But the Bible, it's literal, okay? It's not trying to, there are some things that are symbolic, but take it. I mean, he's he's being so plain with us in these words. He, this is truth. Okay. So, um, so communion every day, that was another thing. Um, listen to the word, spend time with him, get in your closet, get into a quiet place, turn the TV off, step away from the computer, just break away from that distraction. The enemy is all over this stuff now, guys. There is no safe place except you and your Bible and in your closet. Just that is what you can trust. That is where he's going to speak to you. Um, and goodness, did I cover all of my notes here? Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> and that's enough. We've got enough of a long video here. Okay. Guys, I love you. And please, um, as I get more things to share, I will, but also know it's, this is not my, my, 
I don't think this is exactly what the Lord, where he wants me right now. I think he wants all of us to start diligently seeking him like never before, abide in him, uh, hunger for him, and and just knock on that door so he can open it to us and reveal what is on the other side. That's what he wants us to do, or he wouldn't give us mysteries to be solved. All right, God bless you guys. I plead the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach over this video, over every one of my brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, bless them all, and Lord, give them a personal encounter with you, oh Lord Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. All right, love you guys. Bye-bye.